In 2020, you need to be making the absolute most out of your HubSpot investment. It doesn't matter if you're flying sky high in the success stratosphere, there's always room to optimize the various components of your strategy to turn your portal into an even more effective revenue generator. Howdy guys, it's Liv here from Neighborhood, where we help brands find, sell, and keep their people. Here at Neighborhood, we live and breathe HubSpot, spending upwards of six hours a day checking out its various capabilities and showing our clients how best to fill every nook and cranny of their portal to leave no potential power untapped. We found that the key to a great HubSpot portal is to do the things that other businesses don't. You don't necessarily have to do them, but they're the things that will set you apart. So, do you wanna hear our secrets? Well, let's reveal all. First up, Send follow-up emails to verify real email addresses. If you're using landing pages to convert website visitors into leads, they have to provide you with their email addresses in order to receive your offer. However, some contacts won't want to provide you with a real email address. So to ensure that you've got a list of valid emails, set up an automated follow-up email, thanking them for their download or sign up to see whether or not the email soft or hard bounces. You can then take out the trash so that you're left with only a clean and tidy email list where you know that only real humans will be the viewers. Next, use buyer persona style questions on forms to automatically assign personas. If you use HubSpot or you're across inbound, you surely know how imperative buyer personas are to your overall marketing strategy. If you're unaware though, segmenting your contacts by buyer persona will allow you to provide a more personalized experience, but this can often take some serious time. So to save you the headache, try using HubSpot's form fields and workflows to automatically set a contact's persona. To do this, include qualifying questions in your forms with things like, what's your biggest challenge? Or who are your customers? and then set up a workflow to automatically assign a contact to a specific persona depending on their answer. You can then set up lead nurturing and smart content based around these specific personas, rather than just assuming all of your contacts are interested in the same thing. Third tip, remove the navigation on your landing pages. The core purpose of a landing page is to convert website visitors into leads, so the very last thing you want to do is give them the opportunity to click away. Remove the navigation portal and any links outbound to make your landing page distraction-free so people can just concentrate on filling out that form. Fourth on the list, redirect landing pages to thank you pages instead of just a thank you pop-up. This gives you the opportunity to really thank them in detail while also providing them more information and other useful content they might be interested in, giving them the opportunity to check out your website even more or sign up for something else. Next, use smart CTAs with smart content to display content that's relevant to the visitor. With smart CTAs, your content can change depending on the visitor viewing it. So instead of showing the same CTA to every Tom, Dick and Harry, you can show them something different. It could depend on their lifestyle stage, their product interests, their device, anything you think is important. Six, ensure your workflows are working with you. Making sure your workflows are kept up to date ensures that updates to information can be as automatic as possible. For example, if you were to qualify a lead, rather than manually removing a lead owner and removing them from your email listings, HubSpot does all of the heavy lifting for you, doing it all in the background. Next, use branching logic in workflows to ensure contacts never receive the same content twice. Branching logic in workflows allows you to specify whether or not an action should trigger based on a certain criteria being fulfilled. In simple terms, if if a contact has already downloaded and read an ebook, you can set up some actions to ensure that they're sent something new. Eighth on the list, test a variety of different CTAs. Using different CTAs across your website allows your visitors to engage on a level that isn't just contact us and allows you to move them through your sales cycle. Next tip, analyze your social media posts to optimize your messaging. Not only does HubSpot allow you to schedule and monitor your social media posts, it also allows you to analyze each individual tweet, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram post to identify what works and what doesn't. You'll be in the driver's seat as you suss out which social media posts work well, maybe certain words and phrases boost engagement, or the length of the post encourages conversion. Whatever it may be, you can refine your social posts to improve your engagement with your audience. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all of our latest videos delivered every week to your inbox. Number 10, get used to progressive profiling. 
Your forms are super important when it comes to whether or not a visitor converts on a landing page, so you want to ensure they're the best they can possibly be. Queued form fields mean that if a contact has already submitted at least one form on your website and answered the required questions on your form, they'll now be asked something else. Using HubSpot's queued fields, form fields that a contact has already answered can be replaced with different ones, ensuring that you're constantly increasing the profile you have on your leads and putting your sales team in a better position to sell. Now, also ensure grey mail is excluded from your email sends. Grey mail is essentially where contacts have subscribed and opted in to receiving emails from you at some point in time, but have never really engaged with you. If people aren't engaging with your emails and you continue to include them in your email list, all you're doing is decreasing the overall success of your email campaigns and affecting your reporting. Twelfth, create personal and team-wide filters to manage your contacts. Filter your data for each team so that they can concentrate their efforts on the most important leads. You can use marketing lists and filter data within the sales contacts, companies, and deals views in order to find the exact information you and the rest of your team need. Lucky number 13, let people book appointments when it suits them. Give the power back to the people by allowing prospects to schedule appointments quickly and simply and eliminate the awkward back and forth emails. The HubSpot Meetings tool reads your calendar, identifies your availability and allows prospects to get in touch when they're free. We found great success with this in terms of humanizing our brand and appearing far friendlier. Next up, use lead scoring. The HubSpot lead scoring tool allows you to rank prospects and attach them to values based on information they've provided and their behavior on your website. This approach allows you to separate quality leads from those who are just having a look around. You should also use lead flows to increase on-page conversions. HubSpot lead flows tool allows you to create pop-ups, prompts, and forms to get your content offers in front of your visitors at the right time to increase conversion on your site. Using the trusty lead flow tool, you can use certain triggers to determine when your pop-up, prompt, or form appears for a website visitor. For example, how long they've been on a page, how far down the page they've scrolled, or whether they've shown intent to leave the page. 16. Keep tabs on your competitors. HubSpot isn't only useful to tracking your own keywords and conversions, you can also use it to check out the marketing strategies your competitors have tried. How did they pan out? In HubSpot's competitive reports portal, you can better understand metrics like keyword rankings, followers, and marketing grade, and most importantly, how you compare. Next up, Call contacts directly from the CRM to record important details. As well, know when the right time is to call a contact. Studies have shown that if someone submits a form on your website, you're 10 times more likely to get them on the phone if you call them within five minutes than if you were to give them a ring about an hour later. So if you call within those first five, you'll be 21 times more likely to qualify them as a lead than if you waited half an hour. Penultimately, set up tasks for users. A great way to stay on top of managing multiple people and increase cohesion within your sales department is to build out a list of tasks that need to be done right inside your HubSpot CRM, eliminating the need for external software or documents. And finally, merge duplicate contacts. Before you go whole hog and delete a load of contacts, considering merging duplicates. As a long-standing HubSpot partner, we sure have learned a thing or two about what works and what doesn't. And we're constantly finding new ways to make HubSpot run like a well-oiled machine. So that's why we're offering a free audit to help you, whether you're just starting out, to get back on track, or to nip and tuck your platform for maximum efficiency, leave it to the experts. Sign up by hitting the link below. So if you found this video helpful, feel free to share it with someone you know that needs a hand with making the most out of their HubSpot investment. You can also subscribe to our blog where you'll find loads more tools, tips, and templates to help you find, sell, and keep your people, just like we do. <laughs> so that's it from me, happy marketing.